Hello and welcome back to Stop and Go F1. I am Reese, and we are going to be recapping Pit Stop Mania 2023, also known as the Qatar Grand Prix. We're going to get into all of it right now, so make sure you like and subscribe and comment and all those wonderful things. Of course, we will have the driver ratings video out tomorrow, so make sure you don't want to miss that one. But let's talk about this, and actually there's quite a bit to talk about before we actually get into the race itself. So... It was threatened yesterday that we could have uh, limits put on tyres in terms of laps and mandatory pit stops and etc, etc. And with about an hour to go before the race, this was confirmed as correct. It was about an hour, maybe a bit more than an hour actually. But anyway, there is an 18 lap limit on all tyres. So soft, mediums, hards, intermediate, wets, 18 laps only on all of those. Uh, which means that they would have to do free mandatory pit stops. In terms of used tyres, they would also have an 18 lap limit. So however many laps they'd already put on those tyres, they would then take two laps off them for out laps and in laps, but then that would be your number. So that, for example, if you had a used set of medium tyres that you'd use for 10 laps, they'd take two laps off for in and out laps, so that would mean that tyre has done 8 laps, so in the race itself he could only do 10 laps on those tyres. Perfect sense, no one's confused whatsoever. I did think that potentially this would take the strategy out of the hands of the teams. And in a way I think it did. And I think the race would have been more enjoyable if, the, if this wasn't there. I know a lot of people have always been like, oh, let's have more mandatory pit stops. And as we get into the analysis bit of this video, there was a bit of in the race, of the, in the middle of the race, where you have the guys who were starting further back who went a bit longer than the guys at the front, and they're kind of mixing it in between there as the faster guys come through. Uh, that was entertaining. But apart from that, I think this race was just a lot of pit stops. And if maybe Pirelli had come out this morning and gone, hey, we're concerned about the tyres, look out for it, but we're not going to give you like this kind of information, I think that could have done fine. Because as we get into it, you know, I think Max wasn't struggling on his tyres. I think there was quite a few guys who could have gone far more than 18 laps on their tyres. It would have been interesting to see, if you just let the strategist be the strategist, how this race would have been played out, and I think it would have been more entertaining, personally. Anyway, moving on from that, Sergio Perez will start from the pit lane after yesterday's crash where he got caught in that incident between Ocon and Hulkenberg. Uh, basically, his whole side pod on the left-hand side of the car was completely destroyed, so a lot of work on his car uh, yesterday. So he starts from the pit lane, does not get a penalty, though uh, it turns out like a time penalty like Sargent did. Uh, they were able to avoid that. Carlos Sainz, though, will not start the race at all. An oil leak on his engine meant that he was out of commission, not even starting the race. So awful news for Carlos Sainz. Um, as we get to the start of the race, though, here's our tyres as they stand. It was Hamilton, Bottas, Lawson and Magnussen on the softs. Sergio Perez starts from the pit lane on the hard. Everyone else on the mediums. Now, at the front of the grid, we have what me and my friend uh, here referred to as the square of hatred at the front of the grid in terms of Max Verstappen on pole from George Russell in P2. It was Lewis Hamilton in P3 and Fernando Alonso in P4. Now, of, of course, there is history between uh, Max and Lewis. There's a little line of hatred there. There's been the coming together between uh, Max and George earlier on. Another little line of hatred there, but Max and uh, Fernando are okay. Of course, then there's George. He has that beef with uh, Max Verstappen. Him and Lewis haven't been getting on lately. Another line there. And you go down to Lewis Hamilton. He's got the beef with Max. He's got the beef with George. He's got the beef with Alonso. He's got the full freeway hatred. Then Alonso, he's got beef with uh, uh, Hamilton. I think he's okay with Max. And him and George seem to be okay. But, you know, you've got four guys here who've all got quite heated rivalries between them. So it was the square of hatred at the front of the grid. And it was never going to go perfectly for the square of hatred. Because lights out and away we go. And it's the two Mercedes. Mercedes teammates who collide. Uh, they both get a good start. George Russell is challenging Max Verstappen. Lewis Hamilton tries to go round the outside of both of them. Completely sandwiches George. They collide together. Uh, 
Lewis goes off, loses a wheel, gets stuck in the gravel. George gets a puncture, but is able to carry on. 100% uh, Lewis Hamilton's fault, but I don't think he deserved a penalty for it. I think it was just a like a lap one incident. Uh, you know, it was avoidable, but I don't think it should be uh, punished or penalised in that kind of way. But yeah, massive drama at the start of the race as the teammates collide. Uh, Lewis Hamilton at the time was very much angry at George Russell, but has come out later on and said he looked at the replay and accepts uh, 100% responsibility for the incident. So very good of Lewis to take responsibility there. This does bring out the safety car. Uh... Uh, Russell pits for the mediums because he has got a puncture and they have a check over the car they, they're they looking at the car for quite a while which did make me quite concerned at the start but as we go on we'll find out that car is absolutely fine or if it was damaged the damage made it better uh, Alonso though he was right behind the two Mercedes as they hit each other and had to do a bit of avoiding action and because of this Piastri was able to just sail by up into P2 I think he went like uh, was he like P5, P6 up to P2 in one corner fantastic start from uh, Oscar Piastri like Moses he just parted the sea of everyone he saw the perfect line to go through up into uh, second place uh, further down though, Joe, Bottas, Magnussen, Stroll, Lawson all pit behind safety car. As they're coming out, Magnussen nearly hits Stroll, but they get away with it. Uh, safety car is ending, and Nico Hulkenberg, this is a big shame for him, he's noted for the incorrect starting position. Such an easy mistake to make. With Sainz not starting the race, that pit box was left open, and Hulkenberg just drove right into it. Such an easy mistake to make, but obviously one that he would have to get penalised for, and he would later on in the race. Uh, on the restart here, Oscar Piastri gets caught napping massively on Max Verstappen. And as much as we are seeing Oscar Piastri's praise at the minute, rightfully, and he's doing a fantastic job, this is the second day in a row now that he's been caught out massively by a safety car restart. That's something he needs to have a look at there. Max able to build a big gap quite early on. Now, Piastri, I don't think, was ever realistically going to challenge Max at this point, but definitely should not have a gap like that off a of restart. Uh, Hulkenberg passes Yuki Snowda further down for P8, and Russell passes Perez for P13 on lap 6 this is that was a very important move for Russell there didn't want to get stuck behind Perez for too long Hulkenberg does get a penalty though for his incorrect starting position 10 second penalty for him and then here comes the first list of pit stops everyone Yuki pits lap 10 Ocon pits lap 11 Alonso pits lap 12 Gasly pits lap 12 Piastri pits lap 13 Norris pits lap 14 Russell pits lap 15 now Max Verstappen here's the interesting one According to these, uh, the rules for this race, he had to pit on lap 17, and he does, but he set the fastest lap of the race to that point on lap 16 on 17 lap old tyres. So you can tell his tyres were not being ripped apart at all. We know the Red Bull and Max himself, uh, the, that combination of car and driver, have been managing their tyres to perfection throughout the entire race. But here we have an instant, instance here he probably could have done this in the two-stop, possibly. I think he could have probably done that. I think if we let the strategist do the strategy, he probably would have gone for a two-stop in this race. And I imagine you know, they have cars like a Ferrari, which does eat up its tyres. But I think there's a few guys here across the grid who could have done this in less stops. I don't know technically uh, the which ones they are, but I think that would have been an interesting thing to see as we go on. Um... Max does pit, though, on lap 17, as does Sergio Perez. <clears throat> on lap 18, Alexander Albon is leading the race. Now, I don't know if he actually crossed the line, so it would count as a lap in the lead, but he was leading the race. If he, did, if he didn't cross the line, then Max led every lap. If he did cross the line, Max led every lap apart from one, which was led by a Williams which would be a pretty interesting stat there. And this is what I was talking about earlier, where guys like Albon, uh, like they were able to last a little bit longer because they uh, pitted later. I think, when did Albon actually... Did Albon pit under the safety car? No, Albon, yeah, because he had fresh tyres on lap one. He had brand new tyres, so he was allowed to go to lap 18. But he was able to go out a little bit longer, and throughout the race, this would kind of happen with some of the slower cars, meaning that the faster cars who had to pit were now behind them and had to fight their way through. Lots of overtakes, especially at the early points of this race. Uh, Stroll gets team orders to let Alonso free, which is 100% the right thing to do. Alonso had fantastic pace towards the start. Now here comes another quick list, because Albon pits lap 19, Joe pits lap 
lap 19. Uh, Norris gets past Leclerc on lap 19, and Alonso passes his Bottas to get up into P3 on lap 20. Norris passes Stroll for lap for P5. Then Lawson, Magnussen, and Stroll pit on lap 22. Yuki pits lap 23, Piastri pits lap 26, Leclerc pits lap 26, Ocon pits lap 26. You kind of, you got into the rhythm of these pit stops now because everyone's just going to 18 laps because they're just on mediums or hards. You saw the softs come in a bit later on, but you know, they're just on mediums or hards. So it's just 18 laps, 18 laps, 18 laps. You knew when everyone was going to pit, you could write it down. Alonso on lap 26 though has an interesting radar message and sets his arse is on fire because his seat is burning him. Now it did look like they passed him some in the pit stop but we couldn't see necessarily from the angle if they gave him something or not but that was an interesting one a lot of guys suffering from the heat here we saw especially towards the end of the race a lot of guys lifting up the visors to try and get a bit of air in logan Sargent, will get onto him as well but he was massively affected by the heat uh, we saw the guys on the podium afterwards just kind of lying on the floor to try and just gather some kind of uh just get, get a breath after the exhaustion of this race really really tough race on the drivers here Back to pit stops, though. So Alonso pits lap 27, Gasly pits lap 27 as well. Perez is under investigation for his first track limits violation and gets a five-second penalty. Back to some pit stops, though. It's Norris pitting lap 28 and Hulkenberg pitting lap 28. There's a fantastic little battle between Piastri and Albon for P4 on lap 29. Again, you know, the faster cars and the slower cars going up against each other again. Albon... He's fed up. He's been seeing all these blue flags all year. This time he's going to get his elbows out, and he did well to try and keep Piastri behind him as long as he did. Perez pits lap 32. Russell pits lap 33. Alonso has a huge off. Uh, I don't know if it was a tailwind or he just lost it or what, but he has a huge off through the uh, the gravel trap, finds a runoff area, then he just puts his foot down on the runoff area, comes back on. It looked incredible. It's probably illegal because it was a quite dangerous rejoining of the track to cut off Charles Leclerc. Uh, he is under investigation. It will be investigated after the race. If it was me, I'd say that's a penalty. Um, let's see, just in terms of finishing position, if he got a five-second... Would that actually change anything? I don't know if it would. Alonso, where is he? No, the person, the person behind him was thirteen seconds behind. So if he, even if he gets a ten second, he'll be fine. But yeah, I think that should be a penalty for Alonso. Not that it would actually change anything, but that was where Alonso's race kind of changed. He was battling for those top three, top four positions that put him down to P seven after that incident there. Um, <clears throat> Uh, yeah, Verstappen then pits on lap 35. And this is when we first hear these um, radio messages from Logan Sargent. Apparently he was fine going into the race, but, you know, the heat and everything was really, really uh, messing him about and he was not feeling well at all, feeling like he was going to be sick. Uh, James Vowles comes over the radio and tells him to the, to uh, retire the car, but Logan refuses and tries to stay out. You know, you can't, I can't imagine how awful that must be. I mean, we all know how it is when you feel ill, but also imagine that you're incredibly hot and sweaty and cramped and driving at over 100 miles an hour and the G-force that's on you in that car anyway. That must have been absolute torture for Logan Sargent as he went around. Anyway, back to pit stops. Zhou Guan Yu pits on lap 36. Uh, Ocon overtakes Stroll with a very close move for P8 on lap 36 as well. Uh, great driving from both guys, to be fair. I mean, Stroll's had a bad weekend, but even though he got overtaken there, it was still a fantastic little move uh, from him there. Well, not move from him, but, you know, to give Ocon that space, that twisty little section, really quite good. Um, back to pit stops, though. Bottas pits. And so does Liam Lawson, Kevin Magnussen. This is all on lap 40. Another five-second penalty for uh, Sergio Perez with track limits. And on lap 42, Logan Sargent does retire the car. Uh, he stayed out for quite a bit longer after um, he first reported feeling ill, but they showed him trying to get out of the car, and man, was he struggling. I mean, I felt so sorry for him. Um, you know, he was doing really well as well. You know, at one point he was like 12th, 13th place, which is very good, uh, you know, for him this year. And, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to take the mick out of him for feeling ill there because, I mean, imagine, imagine that's so tough. Uh, Ted Kravitz did say later on though that he was feeling better he'd gone to the doctors and he was feeling much better now that he was outside the car uh, Lance Stroll gets a penalty though 5 second penalty for uh, track limits 
Oh, who wants some pit stops? Don't worry, everyone. These are everyone's final pit stops. Piastri's final stop on lap 44. Leclerc's final stop, lap 44. Five-second penalty for Gasly for track limits. Uh, Perez's final stop, lap 43. Norris's final stop, lap 45. Very close coming out of uh, the pit lane here between the two McLarens. Most of the race, the undercut was very strong, but for the McLarens here, it didn't make too much of a difference. McLaren, by the way, did a 1.8-second pit stop. Absolutely incredible stuff. That's the new uh, record not just for the season but since these new tyres have been introduced last year fantastic stuff from the, the uh, McLaren team uh, so close battle between the two McLarens as they come towards the end Alonso has his last stop lap 45 and Albon has his last stop lap 46 Lando Norris told not to overtake by the team but L Norris is uh yeah, he doesn't like team orders, does he? Um, he? He likes to receive... He doesn't like it when he doesn't receive them, and he does like it when he does receive them, and it's for him not to overtake. So he tries to argue against the team orders, but in the end, either he wasn't quick enough or he followed the team orders. We'll have to wait and see if that comes out to which one that was. Albon gets a five-second penalty. Uh, Russell here, he pits on lap 51, his final pit stop for the softs. Now, I thought at the time when I was watching it, I thought he drove over the pit entry line. But that hasn't been reported anywhere, so I must have uh, seen it wrong. But yeah, Russell on the soft. I thought this was going to be quite a challenge here, but we'll see later on that it didn't really come to uh, fruition. Uh, Max Verstappen pits for his final pit stop on lap 32 for the mediums. Now, I thought at the time he should have gone for the softs as well, but I think uh, the Red Bull made the right call on the mediums. Uh, Russell once again struggling for air as was Norris at one point Russell's going down the straight he fully takes both hands off the steering wheel and he's trying to just like waft air into his face it looked like just to try and cool him down the guy's really struggling out there uh, Gasly overtakes Stroll off track and keeps the place for P10 that's on lap 53 uh, but later on, he's told to give the place back because he went off the track. But they it took so long for his team to tell him to give the place back. By the time he has to give the place back, Perez is now on the back of Stroll. And as Gasly goes to give the place back to Stroll, Perez just goes through as well. So Gasly, in trying to gain one position, lost two of them. Uh, Joe gets his final pit stop on lap 53. He goes to the softs. There's a five-second penalty for Lance Stroll for track limits. And then Russell, yeah, on the softs, no pace at all, really. Losing a lot of time to the McLarens. It looked like he was trying to mount a challenge for the uh, final podium position towards the end of the race. But that didn't come through. No pace at all. Losing a lot of time. And also did not have a lot of grip either. Apparently went off the track a couple of times. Uh, towards the end of the race, he had a couple warnings for track limits. So the softs really not agreeing with that Mercedes at the end of the race. But we come around for the final lap and it is Max Verstappen who wins the uh, Pit Stop Mania 2023 Oscar Piastri gets P2 his second podium in a row Norris is in P3 that is the 500th and 501st podiums ever for McLaren there George Russell in P4 for me is driver of the day Fantastic recovery from George Russell. Incident at the start, completely not his fault. Drops down to the back, manages everything really well, comes through P4. I think, honestly, if he hadn't had that incident at the start, he could have had the pace to be challenging Max this whole time. I mean, if you look at the final uh, result, he was 34 seconds off Max Verstappen. And that's with, you know, an extra pit stop. I know it was behind safety cars, so it doesn't really count, but he was right, right down at the back. Fantastic uh, work from George to battle for the uh, grid multiple times as it was during uh, how this uh, how the pit stops played out. You had to overtake guys over and over and over again. So fantastic stuff for Russell, in my opinion, there. Uh, Charles Leclerc, quite anonymous race for him, really, but still comes home in P5. Great stuff for him. Uh, Fernando Alonso is in P6, and as I said, is under investigation, but I don't think that will change anything because Ocon was 13 seconds behind in P7. It's then Bottas in P8, and it was then Perez, but he got given another five-second penalty for track limits, so he would end up in P10. It was Joe in P9, 
Double points finish for Alfa Romeo. Fantastic stuff for that team. Really good stuff. Joe had a great race. A lot. He was very much in the you know on, on an alternative strategy, and throughout most of the race would be up in higher up positions and have to kind of fight some of the top guys, and then drop down and fight up again. Really great stuff from Joe. Stroll was in eleventh. Gasly twelfth. I think Gasly had some kind of he had a uh, some penalties, but I think he had an incident. He had a uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. His car was a bit broken towards the end as well. Magnussen 14th, Yuki 15th, Hulkenberg in 16th, Liam Lawson is the last of the finishing cars. Really not a great weekend for Liam Lawson. I've been singing his praises a lot on his uh, little stint here in Formula 1, but this was not his weekend. And I think this might be his last F1 weekend uh, of this stint as well, because Ricardo is scheduled to come back in Texas. So this could be the last time we see uh, Liam Lawson for a little while probably until 2025 unless he is called up for replacement duty yet again then we have the non-finishers that is logan Sargent, who retired the car because he was really not feeling well lewis hamilton who got caught up in that lap one incident and uh carlos Sainz, who did not start the race so there you go a lot of stuff happening here this weekend really just all over the place my phone is buzzing all the time has something massively changed or is everyone just messaging me? Uh, oh, apparently Ocon was sick on lap 15. So there you go. Another person who was suffering. Esteban Ocon was sick in his helmet on lap 15. Bloody hell. You heard it here first. My goodness. There you go. Wow. Real test for all the drivers there. And I think they all did a fantastic job unbelievably there was more dnfs in the sprint race than there was in the feature i think that's been a fantastic weekend of formula one uh, we'll be back on monday uh tomorrow to talk driver ratings for this weekend i think there'll be a lot of high scores this weekend and then next weekend there is no f1 but there will be a special video going out on friday about one michael schumacher and then we're back the week after that for yet another sprint race, everyone. The Texas Grand Prix uh, sprint race, which should be a fun one. The brand new Haas is going to be there. And probably the return of Daniel Ricciardo as well. So a lot to look forward to in the coming weeks. I hope you'll join me when we get there. Uh, make sure you subscribe for all that. Like, comment, and share with all your friends. Until next time, have a good one. Goodbye.